Today, students, welcome again to an exciting educational video today. This is Dr. Luisito Masanga at your service. Shout out and thank you very much to those students from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao who are faithfully and consistently watching my educational video. To these students, a warm round of applause to all of you, mabuhay. Today, we are going to study and discuss about introduction to brand management. Our learning outcomes for today, number one is we will define what is brand, know the brief history of brands and benefits of branding. The third is the difference uh, brand management from product management. So we are going to study that. And lastly, understand the challenges and opportunities of brand today. What is a brand? A brand could be a term or a sign or a symbol or a name or even a design or a combination of these branding elements. The intent is to identify the goods and services of one entrepreneur from the other competitors. Meaning to say it has a distinction, a difference, a uniqueness from the rest of the competition. And that is a brand. Now, uh, this, a brand is also a valuable asset to the manufacturer, to the producer. It, you know, uh, simplify decision making. It reduced the risk and it set expectations. A brand can also be a name. Example are this one. It could be Apple Computer. It could be Sony. It could be Samsung. It could be General Electric. It can also be a term. Like for example, in the consumer, fast consumer industry, we have Procter & Gamble. They have Tide Ariel in the detergent category. We have also Unilever in the detergent uh, category competing Surf and breeze. Uh, there is also symbols like, for example, McDonald's, Golden Ark, and Nike swoosh. And also we have design like uh, Barberi's plate and Tubleron pyramid. So it has many branding elements. It can be name, a term, a symbol, and a design. And these are called branding elements. There are many sources of brand names. It could come from the name of individuals or people. It could come from location or places, or it can come from nature, uh, like for example, uh, animals. And you know, uh, it can also come from inherited, you know, definition of the product. Many individual names, no, like people, like. Uh, Porsche, Versace, Estee Lauder, and places like uh, Philippine Airlines, British Airways, Hyundai's uh, Santa Fe or Tucson. It could be animals like uh, Ford Mustang and Dove Soap. No? And some uh, inherited uh, definition of the product like uh, Mr. Quickie or Compact Computers are sources of uh, brand names. It is very imperative to understand the history of branding. During those times, no, uh, in uh, you know, in agriculture sector, there is already a branding, and uh, the Norse word is brander, which means to burn, because uh, they have you know livestock that has to be uh, named uh, put some logos on the skin of the livestock by heating a metal and then uh, pressing it on the animal skin. And that could show ownership no, uh, of these different livestock. Way back uh, 1200s, uh, the goldsmith, silversmith, and some pastry or bread makers they have to uh, put in their branding to ensure 
uh, you know, honesty in measurement, the accuracy when they are measuring their products. It started way back in the 1200s. You know, branding occurred 1300s before Christ. Uh, in pot pottery making, no, they have to identify uh, the country of origin of where this uh, pottery came from, the source of origin, the porcelain in China, Greece, Rome, and India. So in the 1300s before Christ, there is already no, the history of branding. In the uh, 1600s and 1800s, even criminals were already put a tag no? or an identification. Like for example, in England, they put an S on the person's cheek, meaning to say it signified that you are a criminal coming from England. Likewise, in France, you have a fleur de lis. Fleur is flower and lis is lily. And if they have that uh, insignia or mark, it means that you are from France. And then in the uh, 1800s, uh, medicines and you know tobacco industry uh, began branding their products no? for uh, identification. Uh, these are uh, manufactured from this uh, country, who is the manufacturer and the date of manufacturing and many more. No? Same is true in the 1800s. No, nowadays uh, it started in by uh, 1800s, where fraternities and sororities uh, have already uh, started labeling the names of their fraternities, no, uh, in order to show identification and bonding. In other words, uh, the underlying needs from which a branding originated is that you have a mark of ownership, uh, the integrity that you are doing a fair and honest business, that you are providing excellent quality, you identify and different, uh, differentiate your brand from the rest of the competition. And there is already a creation of the emotional uh, perception of the consumers. So in other words, uh, branding, there is a promise what the product can do to solve the problem of the consumer. Branding, there is awareness. There is corporate reputation. There is prominence. Like for example, you own a Porsche, there is prominence no? that uh, you reflect to your peers, you reflect to the community, to the society. Okay? For example, you are using uh, you know, an iPhone that is you know, prestige and prominence that because you have this kind of gadget, there is a you know, a, a promise that this brand is going to deliver even though the price is premium. There are many advantages, opportunities, and benefits of branding on two sectors. First, uh, the consumers, and of course, the manufacturers or owner of the brand. Uh, on the side of the manufacturer, it means uh, identification to simplify handling or tracing. It also means legally protecting unique features or specifications of your product. It signals quality level to satisfied consumers. It also is a means of endow endowing products with unique associations. It is a source of competitive advantage and source of financial returns. Meaning to say, if you have a good perception of your brand, you know, the positive percep perception of consumers, you show your uniqueness 
and difference of your product against your competition, it creates brand equity. You increase your revenues, you increase your profitability, therefore, you strengthen your brand equity, which is the value that the company gains from its name or logo. So, you know, in the study of public relation, is one tool to create and manage your positive reputation to the public. And on the side of the consumers, it is, you know, identification of where the product is coming from. It also, you know, assign responsibility to the product producer or maker. There is risk reduction simply because, you know, if you want to purchase, let's say, an iPhone, the risk of, you know, the risk of your reputation you own an iPhone rather than owning a, you know, an Android phone. So, there is less risk because you know that an iPhone is very durable, especially the security. And also, there is search cost reduce, promise brand, or with the maker of the product, the symbolic device, no? the signal of quality. That is true. The brand of Apple computers, no, it's an Apple with a bike. No? And iPhone distinguish itself simply because they are not Android, they are iOS. So this branding creates, though selling at a premium price, but still consumers would like to purchase an iPhone even at a premium price because there is the brand, there is the quality, there is the positive perception, there is brand equity. There are major differences, no? being a brand manager and being a product manager. Simply because brand, uh, brand management is more than product management. Why? Because you create the positive reputation, the emotional reputation of that brand to the public. How the consumer perceive your brand. It creates increased revenues. It creates profitability of your brand. No? You gain positive brand equity. The value and this brand, there is, you know, distinctive dimensions that differentiate you from the competition. There is positive perception because of your uniqueness of your product to the competition. While product management deals with the tangible issues, like, for example, uh, you know, the actual product, the augmented product level, and the core benefit no, of that product. Because in product management, there is a three product levels, the core, the actual, and the augmented. And one distinct uh, difference between brand and product management is that uh, in product management, Managers, you know, execute planning, organizing, implementing, controlling the product lines. Not unlike the brand managers who manages the corporate brands, the, the totality, the holistic, at a high level. And uh, mostly focusing on brand equity measurement. What is brand equity? It is the value a company gains from its name, from its logo, from the branding elements. And brand management identifies the brand from its competition. Here we see side by side that a product manager is responsible for the research and development of a new product, 
the design, the features, uh, the specifications, the product profitability, the packaging, the pricing, and many product ranges, no? the product mixes, and the product lines. But on the other side, a brand manager is responsible not only to the brand, but to the brand identity and consistency. The brand equity, the brand revenues, the marketing, the market share, the strategy, and the product ranges and extension. So meaning to say, the brand manager has more responsibility and the responsibility is 360 degrees, not unlike the product manager that focuses on a specific uh, product category. Currently, there are many challenges uh, facing brands today no, in the 21st century. Uh, one mention here is the proliferation of e-commerce. There are many opportunities. The shift to online shopping, especially now uh, we have a global pandemic, everything is done through internet or e-commerce. The demand for ethical responsibility, no? If you are doing, you know, e-commerce, there should be an ethical standard. Because here, the, in the practice in the Philippines, once uh, payment is done to credit cards, uh, there is a tendency that there is, you know, uh, scamming or hacking of your PIN code or your password. And sometimes, even though you are paid, the product will not be delivered to you. So there are some ethical responsibility. And another challenge is the weakening of brand loyalty. Because there are so many alternative choices nowadays. No? You know, there, there are so many products coming from China, competing with Japan, competing with Germany and other uh, countries no? uh, in, in Europe and in the United States. And there is already an aging customer base. Shifting demographics, private level competition, diminish, diminishing uh, shelf space, direct-to-consumer competitors, and shrinking marketing budgets. No? Especially nowadays, uh, another challenge is the pandemic. And nowadays, a lot of uh, the current trend right now, it is uh, COVID cases are now increasing. And the government is trying to reduce again the capacity. Uh, and uh, much more, there are so many protocols, strict protocols that has to be followed. So, here, the branding is the balance of health and economy. So it affects, especially nowadays, that we encountered this COVID-19. Okay? And our reference is Kevin Lane Keller. Thank you very much for this reference. Thank you again for listening. Please do subscribe and share the channel. Keep safe, everyone.